Welcome back to the final video in this first chapter, Data Representation, which supports the IGCSE Computer Science course for 2023 to 2025. Uh, we're going to be looking at data storage and compression, and we need to understand a couple of things. First of all, we need to understand the purpose and need for data compression. And secondly, we need to understand how files are compressed using lossy and lossless compression techniques. So what is data compression and why do we need it? Well, on our files, we can have sound images and movie files, and these can take up a lot of space that can be very, very large. Um, it's therefore necessary to reduce or compress the size of these files um, for any of the following reasons. We might need to save storage space on our devices. If we're using a MacBook or a, a, a laptop, for example, um, which contains a, a hard disk or a solid state drive, it's only a specific size, maybe one terabyte, or maybe even less. So the more we put onto that, the, the quicker it's going to fill up. So if we reduce the size of these files, then obviously we can fit more on it. Um, secondly, we might need to reduce the time taken to stream a music or a video file. If we've got a very large file that we're trying to watch on our mobile phones or our, our portable devices, um, it might suffer in terms of the internet connection. It might do something called buffering, where it keeps having to stop and start, to download the information from the music or video file, and it might be pausing and stopping and, and causing all sorts of problems, which is obviously going to lead to um, spoiling our enjoyment. Thirdly, um, we also need to reduce the time taken to upload, download, or to transfer a file over the internet. If you've got a very large file, it's obviously going to take a longer time to get that file to where it needs to be, or to download it onto your computer. There are two main types of data compression, um, and the clues in, in the name as to what exactly they do. The first one we're going to look at is lossy, and then secondly we're going to look at lossless. I'm just going to quickly go through um, an overview of each one, and then we're going to look at each one in, in a lot more detail. So lossy um, is, is when some of the original file has, has been taken away, it's been removed. Um, this may affect the quality slightly. It's used with images such as JPEGs, and it's also used in MP3 and MP4 compression. Um, it, eliminate, it eliminates unnecessary information. So yes, it's lowers the quality, um, but this generally goes unnoticed um, by our eyes or by our ears when we listen to or, or look um, at, the ver at, at this data. Lossless compression works in a different way. All the data in the file, when it's been compressed, um, is, re is received in its original format. So although it's been compressed, none of the original information has been removed. It's used for text files, spreadsheets, databases, and program code, where the information, where if any information was missing or moved, it could be disastrous. I mean, you can't, you couldn't um, send a spreadsheet to a to a person, let's say, and it didn't have any results in it, or it had a missing column with important data, or bits of data had been taken out. So that must arrive to the receiver intact, and that's when we'd need lossless compression. Here we have some file types, um, some compressed file types that I've put together you may be familiar with. We start with a PDF, um, a type of lossless compression um, used to tr transport documents, transfer documents between different computers. And there's no constraints in terms of what software you have on your computer. We've got the JPEG, which is an image file which is used generally for web pages, and this uses lossy comp compression. We've mentioned it before. Um, similar, we've got the GIF which um, uses again lossy compression but is restricted to 256 colors. You'll have seen this for memes and animated GIFs. Um, the PNG file, a popular file format on, the, on, um, on websites, um, is lossless compression but it also has an alpha channel which preserves the transparent background. And then we have um, MP3s and MP4s which both use lossy compression for music and for multimedia formats. 
So we'll talk in more detail first of all about lossy compression. This type of compression permanently removes some data. Um, we don't get it back. If we compress a file then we uncompress it, um, data has been removed. Um, it recreates a file using the remaining data and uses algorithms to guess the removed content. Uncompressed data is not the same as the original. Um, I've got an example here of, um, of a Python file I've created. Obviously if we compress this Python file we might lose some of the data. I've gone a little bit overboard but you can see that lossy compression would not be used. It wouldn't be possible to use that. This program simply wouldn't run. It would be a simple th similar thing for a spreadsheet or database or something along those lines, even a book. Here, this JPEG, um, if we zoom right in um, to the colored pixels, what it is doing, it is um, grouping similar pixels together or merging them into similar colors. So it's reducing the, the, um, the color depth. It also finds groups of repeating data, in this case, this sort of orangey yellow and the green and records the data only once along the number of times we've seen that particular colour. So for example this particular line we've got 12 of the yellowy orange and we've got 6 of the green. Um, when uncompressed an image does not restore as we mentioned before or rebuild to its original form um, and the data size is reduced but image quality can also be compromised. In terms of MP3s and MP4s, um, an MP3 audio compressed compressed file, a music file, is stored as an MP3. So you'll be familiar with these, and they can reduce a, a music file right um, right up, right down to almost ninety percent smaller than its original format. One you might find on a CD, something like a, a FLAC file. Um, they use lossy compression, and they remove the sound that we can't hear. So. If you look at the little diagram we've got, all the blue in the original file is, is, is gone. Something, if we say something like um, a dog whistle, we cannot hear it, but obviously we can whistle and the dog comes back. It's a sound that we can't distinguish and therefore it wouldn't be needed. MP4 obviously works in a similar way in terms of what it's removing to reduce that file down. Move on to lossless compression. Okay, so what is this? Well, with this technique, all the data from the original uncompressed file can be reconstructed. What you compress is the same as what you get back when you uncompress it. It's particularly important for files which uh, where any loss of data could be disastrous. I mentioned before Python programs, but things like complex spreadsheets, things like um, databases would all suffer if they were compressed using lossy compression. Lossless file compression is designed so that none of the original detail from the file is lost. But how does that work? One of the main types of lossless reversible file compression, uh, the one that's described in detail in the book, is known as run length encoding or RLE. Now this it looks at strings of adjacent identical data or identical characters and encodes them into two different values. Uh, the first value represents the number of identical data items and the second value represents the code of the data item, um, sometimes using ASCII code for particular keyboard characters. Um, it's only effective where there is a long run of repeating units. So I'm going to show you an example I've got some text, I mean it's not really a word, it's just a group of A's, a group of B's, C's and D's. But assuming each character requires one byte, then the string needs 16 bytes, the 16 characters. If we assume ASCII code is being used, then the string can be coded as follows. So we've got five lots of the value 97, we've got four lots of the value 98, and you can see that on the little, little box I've put on there, the little reference. Um, two lots of 99C and um, five lots of the value D100. Assuming each number in the second row requires one byte of memory, the RLE code will need only eight bytes. So let's reduce it by half. We've got 50% of the file size. Okay. Working similarly for images, um, I've got the letter F, I've just got a black and white Im image here. And of course, this is one bit 
each one of these little pixels, each one of these squares can be referred to as one bit of information. Therefore, it's either black or white. So I've separated this out into ones and zeros, as you can see there. So we've, on the top row, we've got eight lots of white of ones if we use w to equal one. Um, but we've got one on the next row before the f starts. We've got another one just below it. So we've got nine ones, and then we've got the black section, which is obviously uh, six blacks, and then two more whites, a black, and we carry on and carry on and carry on until we get until we can establish that the um, 8x8 grid it would need 64 bytes of information for that uncompressed file format but if we work in this manner if we assign this number then we can reduce it right down to only 30 bytes to store the same image so again we've over half uh, over 50 percent compression there if we look at colors or colored images um, we can assign values again to this, and I've got a, a complicated one again using examples um, from the from from Cambridge. So we've assigned a value to each each color. For example, black is zero zero zero, white is two five five two five five two five five. The same as in RGB format. Green, no lots of red, full two five five green, um, no lots of blue red 255 red zero green zero blue so what have we got here well if i start with the top one we've got two lots of black two lots of zero 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 then we move on to four lots of zero two five five zero and then back to black again and we continue 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 so the original image eight by eight square would need three bytes per square this incorporates the rgb values therefore the uncompressed file for this image would be 8 times 8, 64, times 3, 192. But the RLE code is only 92 um, values, which means that the compressed file would then become 92 bytes. So therefore, again, we're reducing it, we're doing quite well here, we're reducing it by about 52%. So that's fantastic. So just to recap, we've been through lossless, we've been through lossy compression, um, we know the differences, we know that one potentially loses data, loses quality, loses information, and the other one lossless um, retains everything that, um, that you started with. But why do we use data compression? Well, it creates smaller files, um, which equals smaller packets, which equals faster transmission. Um, Therefore, it's quicker to complete, it reduces traffic over the internet, there's less chance of collision or transmission errors. It improves download speeds of video and sound, including voice over IP systems and image files. It speeds up downloads of web pages that uses lots of images and it reduces the space on your hard disk or on the server. Now we've got here a little, a little table just to finish off with about the main differences and I'll just read this out to you. So lossy, if we compare the two, lossy compression is a method which eliminates the data which is not noticeable. Um, lossless compression does not eliminate the data which is not noticeable. Okay, that's fair enough. In lossy compression, if you were to do a comparison on, on an exam paper, in lossy compression, a file does not restore or rebuild to its original form, whereas in lossless it would do. In lossy compression, data quality is compromised in lossless, obviously, data compression isn't isn't compromised because you're getting the same thing back. Lossy is used for images, audio, and video files, whereas lossless is used for text um, of programs. It is used again for images and sound, though, where this is imperative. Um, lossy compression is termed as reversible compression. Um, lossless compression is termed as reversible compression, and that's it. So. That brings us to the end of chapter one. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've put together a, um, on, the, on the next video, I've put together um, all the key terms, like a glossary of key terms, um, flashcards, for you to have a look through and it will help you to revise. So watch out for that coming, um, coming onto YouTube very, very shortly. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next time. Thank you very much indeed.